Today we're going to go over combustion analysis with a Test 0327 combustion analyzer. Probably one of the most frequent questions we get is why would you ever do a combustion analysis on an appliance like this one when it's pretty much not adjustable? After all, we can only set the fuel pressure and the blower speed, and after that there's not a lot we can do with it. The problem is, is that this appliance is installed in a dynamic environment. We have things like kitchen exhaust fans, bathroom exhaust fans, your dryer that affect the combustion process. We want to make sure that the combustion is stable and the appliance is operating safely with reasonable amounts of carbon monoxide and the flue gas to no carbon monoxide and the flue gas and that there's no CO in the home. Power up the analyzer and all segments are displayed. When it comes up we see the unit serial number, the firmware version and the time. We're going to select flue gas test. It's flashing natural gas. We use the up and down arrow keys to select a different fuel. We select OK. And the unit continues on through a 30 second countdown. The next step is to drill a hole in the flue pipe about 6 to 10 inches above the furnace. Insert the cone into the flue pipe so that air can't get sucked around the shaft. We insert the shaft about to the center of the flue pipe, take it all the way to the back, and then pull it out about an inch. And next we'll start our combustion analysis. We want to do a pretest. We want to make sure the unit is operating safely before we make any adjustments to the appliance. When the system powers up, we're going to watch the CO and the CO air free. Typically, we want to see the CO air free under 400 parts per million uh, when the furnace lights off and during operation. We're watching CO to protect the cell. If at any time the CO reading gets over 1,000 parts per million, you should probably pull the probe from the stack. After we get the reading stabilized, we want to go ahead and print out the results. So we'll press the print key and the print to a wireless printer right above. We need to make sure there's a line of sight with a wireless printer because it's an IR type device. Now that we've got the initial combustion analysis done, we're going to go ahead and make our adjustments and service the appliance. Next we want to go ahead and check the gas line for leaks. We also want to check inside the burners to make sure the gas valve is not leaking by. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to connect a digital manometer and we're going to go ahead and check our fuel pressure and make sure it falls within the manufacturer's specifications. After the furnace lights off, we're going to verify that the pressure falls in the correct range, in this case 1.7 inches. We'll go ahead and adjust it up. Well, it's close. And now we're right on the money. Next we're going to check the temperature rise. Next we want to reinstall the door panel and we want to do this every time we perform a combustion analysis because having the door off will change the operating characteristics of the furnace. Now we're going to do our post test and make sure that the operation is safe after we've adjusted the fuel pressure and the blower speed. Again, pay particular attention to CO and O2 and make sure they're both stable. And then finally print out the results. All right, now that we've gone through the basics of a combustion analysis, it's important to realize that there is a lot more to learn. If you have an opportunity, you should consider taking classes. You may want to consult the Tesla Combustion Guide for more information on how to do combustion testing. Performing a combustion analysis provides your customer with added safety and efficiency that they won't get without it. It's critical that we perform this testing, again, because the appliance is installed in a dynamic environment. We want to make sure that our customers are safe and we limit our liability as contractors.